What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming out to you today's video, which is the show aquarium, finishing the canopy and wrapping the stand in MDF. So, let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack, I am indeed The Balding Reefer, or should I say bald now, I specialise in tropical, cold water, pond and marine fish. Part one, which I'll leave a link above, was us actually constructing the aquarium stand and getting halfway through doing the canopy. In today's video, we're gonna be finishing that canopy off and then we're also gonna be cladding the whole of the aquarium stand in MDF and building the doors as well. Let me spin you around though, show you where we're up to for now. Okay, so here it is in all of its glory. I've just detached the canopy off the top because I'm gonna show you a quick way now of how to build the actual canopy lid and how we're gonna be securing it down. In essence, what I've done is I've just took the canopy off, I've laid it on this wood, I've made sure my ends are slightly overlapping, so there is a slight gap down there, and as you can see down there, there's a slight gap down there. When I actually cut this down, this piece in theory should fit perfectly inside of this hole. Okay, so I've measured my cut line, it is the inside line that I need to cut onto, so I need to ignore the outside line and come down now and cut all this down to length. I just want to make sure I've got enough clearance off the bottom of the aquarium stand so I don't start chopping it into, the, into little pieces and then we can get to it. I will put you on a little bit of a fast forward on here, don't worry. Okay, so. That's the top cut down. Now let me lay the canopy back down on the floor and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to attach this to the top of the canopy. Okay, so you'll be pleased to know the canopy fits as snug as a bug in a rug. Now, what I've done is because I'm making use of the equipment that I've actually got to hand, what I've actually gone ahead and done is I've, I've ripped down some of these strips. So in essence, what I'm going to be doing is getting these strips and just putting them on the side of the aquarium like so. Well, let's say the side of the aquarium, the side of the canopy like so. So there'll be three on the back side and there'll be three on the front side. Then there will be one on either end. All this is going to actually enable us is to give us a little bit of a lip for the canopy to sit onto. Okay. It's now in, it's now time to flip it over and show you what it looks like from the reverse side. So there we have it. That is how the top of the aquarium canopy is gonna look. We are gonna be getting some uh, like breather holes put in the top here and here. Now for those of you that keep exotic pets, like lizards, snakes and things like that, you'll know exactly what I mean. They're actually air vents for a vivarium that I'm actually going to be putting the top on here just to give it that little bit uh, of breathable space in the top. But, let me get the canopy back onto the aquarium, then I'll show you how I'm actually going to attach the aquarium to the glass. Okay, so that's the aquarium back on the stand, let me lift the canopy back on and in place. Okay, so that there now is the canopy back on. What I need to do is get my spirit level now so I can make sure that it's all marked and level. And we simply do that by putting it on, making sure the magic bubble sits perfectly in the middle. This is the beauty about building an aquarium stand with exact measurements. 
Now if you look at this, let me just grab the tripod. If you look at that now, it is sat smack bang in between those two bubbles. Now it's just a matter of going all the way around and making sure every part of it's level. All we're gonna be doing is the same way we've got these top pieces on here. We're basically gonna be doing exactly the same thing, but just across the bottom. So we'll probably put one in here, one in here, one on the inside and one on the outside. But let me snap back to you in a second once I've got these cut and screwed and fixed into place. So that there now is all the relevant different supports put in place. Does it look the best? No. Are you going to be able to see? No. Now, what I'm going to do now is just again showcase how the lid's going to work and when we put it in place. But again, obviously don't forget guys, I do need to sand this down. For the time being, like I say, this is just temporary until I've actually sanded it properly. will be as snug as a bug in a rug and there we have it so that is the canopy pretty much fully complete all I need to go ahead and do now is like I say bore the holes in the top of where we're going to be putting those air vents but what I need to do now is head off down to B&Q so you got no choice you're coming with me Told you I had no choice you were coming. Seven pound per meter square. What I want it to look like is like a nice sort of gray like this. Or maybe something a little bit darker like that. I'm unsure. So I think that will actually look quite nice though in the darker colour I don't want to go too light like that I can always do that in another build let's check the other side hmm too light guess you're going to have to wait and see Okay, so that's us back from being q now. You've just seen the laminate flooring that we have gone ahead and picked up and obviously the OSB board as well. Uh, I've currently ripped the OSB board down to size already, but let me spin you around now and put you on the tripod so I can show you my method of actually cladding this in the chipboard that we've just bought. Okay, so as you guys can see, you're now back in the tripod. The ripped down chipboard, I've already done that off camera. You guys have already seen me, how I do my cuts throughout this video and stuff. Um, but whilst I'm here, I just wanted to go through a couple of different points that people had picked up from the last video. A lot of people were asking me about um, when I'm screwing into the chipboard or screwing into the MDF, am I using a pilot hole? The answer to that is yes and no. So the reason for the answer being yes and no is I was getting really sick, sick and tired of having to swap out my drill bit, put in my um, wood drill piece, bore in the pilot hole, then swap it back round, put it back in, crack it off, make sure it's level, then going ahead and adding in my next screw. So what I've actually got for you is a top tip on how to drill a pilot hole into this chipboard without actually swapping through your drill bit. Let me just zoom in a little bit more for you. Okay, so here's my top tip. So obviously at the moment, the driver is in a forward motion. So if I engage my drill now, it's gonna bite into the wood and it's gonna send that screw right down. However, what we wanna do, switch to reverse, apply some pressure and spin this up really, really fast in reverse. Switch it back to forward motion and then drive it straight on in. And that is my way and my top tip from Pops over in Bulgaria on how to actually drive a screw into a piece of MDF, a piece of chipboard or any small thin piece of wood without actually splitting it. Okay, so here's the aquarium stand now clad in the chipboard. Now for the time being, 
These screw holes here are only temporary. What I'm actually gonna be doing is if you look down the bottom on here where the join is, I've actually got a plinth all the way across the bottom. The reason for that is obviously if any water is to get down here, I don't want the doors to swell up. I'd rather just the plinth swell up that we can always replace afterwards. Now it shouldn't ever get water there, but I'd rather future proof it and be safe than sorry. So these screws here are actually pilot holes. The reason that I put pilot holes in there is once I actually take this board off, obviously the screw hole will be in the wood. That's gonna tell me exactly where my magnets need to go, which is exactly how I'm actually gonna be securing these on. But what I'm gonna do first off is I'm actually gonna wrap this in the laminate and then show you uh, the spade tool that I'm gonna to use to be able to bore out this hole to, it'll be a 25 mil hole round and it'll be three and a half mil deep. This chipboard is actually 12 mil deep. So what I want is when it sits flush on here, that you can't see any hinges or anything like that. Because don't forget guys, like I say, this year is gonna be an absolute show aquarium. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm just gonna mark up my laminates and show you where my cuts need to go. So let me snap back to you in a second when we've got one of the boxes open and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do it. Okay, so we're just back from B&Q and you will notice that I went for the dark laminate. I think it's just gonna suit multiple sort of color schemes that people are gonna have in their houses. And I think it's gonna look an awful lot nicer when the tanks, when the, sorry, when the aquarium sand's actually enclosed in it. Now, I am, if I'm honest, I am struggling to get the laminate to adhere to the chipboard. The reason for that is I've bought some of this multi-purpose impact instant contact adhesive. It's not all that great, if I'm honest. Now, the original plan was to obviously hide all of the cuts. We're gonna actually put a, a like a bevel on the outside. So we're gonna put like a bead in, whether that's like an aluminium strip or that's a wooden strip, I don't actually know as of yet. I want to actually get this on and then offer up a couple of different pieces and see what we think's best. So what I'm actually doing for the time being is I am still using the contact adhesive because it does give it a little bit of grip, but I'm just driving these screws in here on the side for the time being. I'm not particularly bothered about these screws being on show because like I say, they're, at, they're eventually going to be encased with an inch wrap around. So it's going to come from sort of here and then it's going to finish sort of on here. So that's what i've just been doing for the time being now i've put my kickboard strip across the bottom just down there as you will see and luckily enough it, all, it is all one piece so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is so we can put this joint up here that's on the bottom we actually need to trim off this edge piece on here so that's exactly what i'm going to go ahead and do now then once i've done that it's just a matter of offering it up and then once it's all on I'm not going to worry about my cut in the middle for the time being all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tongue and groove these all the way in get them up to the right height drive a screw in on the corner just here and a screw in on the bottom just to hold it in place I'm then going to come along the back side with a marker pen just so I know where to cut then when I take my doors off, which I will do on video with you guys to show you how I'm actually going to bevel out for the magnets, I'm then going to screw these boards in place. So let me get down to cutting my sizes and I'll snap back to you in a moment. Okay, so here's where I'm up to for the time being. Now what I can do is I can show you what I mean about this edge now. So as you can see, obviously I wanted the front to overlap on the sides to be able to hide any imperfections on here. So what I'm gonna do is there's gonna be a lip that's gonna sit across the top, holding these screws in here. And then there's gonna be another um, like picture frame joint, if you imagine in here, hiding this lip down here as well. And that's either gonna be aluminium or it's gonna be a wood that's gonna be stained a very, very similar uh, color to this. But let me just get down low so I can sort of show you, show you guys how it looks. Obviously, as you can see from the step down in here, I have got a little bit of planing to do on the top there, just to take out that little bit of a bit of a, an imperfection, shall we say? Um, but I've intentionally, like I say, left this piece up here, so when I am planing it down, it's going to be a lot easier for me to sort of run across the top. But that is it for today's video. 
you're going to have to make sure you are subscribed to be able to follow this build along because obviously don't forget next time we are going to be obviously putting in the magnets on the doors and i'll show you how the doors work without any hinges and obviously we're going to be uh, fixing the canopy on the top as well so gonna end that one here super super stoked and super super excited uh for this build with you guys obviously a lot of you were really interested to see how the laminate was coming out let me know in the comment section down below i know it's not done yet so just bear that in mind and um, that this will look pristine when it is finished i have no doubts so swipe up and over here or over here there'll be a subscribe button hit that for me hit the bell notification like i say and leave me a comment down below on what you guys think of this build so far uh follow me on social media facebook and twitter is at the balding reefer instagram slightly different popping up somewhere down here now that's at the dot balding dot reefer but as ever stay safe Stay sane, but most importantly, people, stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.